Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the February edition of our Biotechnical Advocacy Lab. Today, we will be playing the political capital game. So I hope you're excited and have your competitive juices going. Um, Alex Dickinson of the Beekeeper Group is gonna lead the game. Um, you guys are familiar with Alex. She is a vice president and chief of staff at the Beekeeper Group. One minor note, I did send around the scorecard and a little background info on the game. Um, so if you got that email, make sure you download that and have that open. Alex is gonna spend some time walking through that before the game actually starts. But we can also put a link in the chat as well um, in case you can't get to your email right now. So again, thanks so much for joining. Good luck and Alex, take it away. Thank you so much, Amanda. I'm gonna start sharing my screen here for everyone. Um, let me get this going. All right. Uh, and I want to first start off by saying uh, feel free to add anything into the chat uh, as we're going through this. This is going to be a really interactive game and a really interactive session. Uh, so the chat area will be good. And while we're in there right now, actually, uh, would anyone want to confirm that they can see something that says political capital on their screen right now in the chat? see not seeing anything but I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that we're, we're a go here uh, so fantastic all right uh, next thing is I'm going to introduce you to uh, political capital uh, it's gonna start with a little bit of setup pro tips so just bear there with me for a moment uh, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the game give you our background scenario and then walk you through the rules and a sample round, and then we'll play. But you did hear that correctly, so there will be a sample round at the beginning. Okay, so to start off with those setup priorities, there are a few things you may want to have on hand. Uh, the first is the instructions PDF. Uh, Amanda just mentioned this. You should have received this via email. I am going to uh, go ahead and post this uh, PDF in here. There's a Dropbox link in there, so you sh should be able to access it there. The PDF has the scorecard, but in the session description, you'll see, or in the, in the description, you'll see separated versions and everything and in the token as well. So you can see the tokens. We'll go through this again in a moment. Um, if you had a chance to print out the instructions and scorecard ahead of time, good on you. That's great. If not, don't worry about it. If you printed it out, make sure you've got a pen handy because you're going to need to be crossing out some things. If you didn't print it out ahead of time, just open it up the PDF in a browser or with software like Adobe Acrobat, and that will let you use a fillable PDF. A quick pro tip, and this is not to scare anyone who may have been a liberal arts major like myself back in the day, but you may want to have a calculator on hand. Uh, it's not hard math, but it can make things go a little faster as we go through this. I usually use my phone, or true story, if you just go ahead and type in calculator into Google, a calculator will show up. So those are my top level pro tips here. Okay, let's get started and let's talk about what political capital is. Political capital is an award-winning training game that we have customized for you. Each of you is going to be playing by yourself, and the objective of the game is to get votes for a fictitious piece of legislation. You will be asked to allocate budget, aka tokens, to different tactics over the course of four weeks leading up to a vote. Pretty condensed time frame, so important to keep that in mind. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a game without a little bit of competition, so you will be competing against an opponent. The opponent has no advantage in this game, meaning they have the exact same amount of tokens or budget and are faced with the exact same scenarios that you are, which is going to be great for us. So your job is to choose which advocacy tactics to implement and when, and to try and beat your opponent. As we go through the session, I'm gonna ask you to share some scores in the chat uh, so we can get a good gauge of how people are doing here, but it should be a lot of fun. All right, let's get started. Uh, first off, we're gonna talk about the scenario at hand. So imagine a post-COVID, everyone is vaccinated world. That's where we're, we're going for with this. So in this post-COVID world, forward-thinking members of the United States House of Representatives have introduced House Resolution 1, which will reform the Medicare Part D benefit to address increasing out-of-pocket costs by adding a maximum out-of-pocket cap. 
I will say for all of those wonks up there, yes, there is an HR1 and it is not this. We're gonna roll with an understanding that this is focused on Medicare Part D and not voting rights or anything else. To reiterate, your goal is to, in these next few weeks, leading up to the scheduled House vote, uh, to make sure that senior population's voices are heard in Congress, ultimately through the passage of HR1. You are currently eight votes short of the 218 votes needed. And your job is to try and get those votes. But as a reminder, the active and very engaged Stop All Government Spending Coalition will be fighting you every single step of the way here. So that's your opponent, and you want to think about where they may be going and what they may be playing um, against. All right, let's talk about the rules of the game. The rules. Each player receives eight tokens of each color type. There are 32 tokens total. These last you the whole game. So you only have that finite budget. You can see those on page four of the PDF. Uh, and uh, just to actually show you what those tokens look like really quickly, grassroots, public policy, media relations, and direct lobbying. So you will use the tokens to engage in tactics to gain votes towards the goal. Each tactic is worth a certain number of votes in, e in each round. So the worth of the tactic will be revealed after you have submitted your tokens. So what will happen is you will submit tokens and say how much you think this is going to, you want to invest in this, and then the worth of that will be revealed afterwards. Each round, again, represents one week leading up to the vote. You may invest zero or multiple tokens on a particular tactic or tactics. If you choose to invest multiple tokens, that, rep that represents how much you value the action, not how many times the action is carried it out. So as an example that's not in this game, let's say one of the options is to host a fundraising event. If you were to put two tokens down, it would not count as two fundraising events. It would just mean that you value that tactic more than others in the round. The more you invest, the more votes you may gain. But be careful, each tactic is not valued equally. Remember, your opponent is also investing in tactics each round. If your opponent invests more on a tactic, you may lose votes. We'll go over and we'll look at this in the sample round. It'll all become very clear in a moment here. The last two things that you need to know. First, whatever you do, whatever you do not use, rather, in rounds one through three, so one, two, and three, you will need to use in round four. This is a use it or lose it budget for your organization. And at the end, end of the campaign, you have got to use everything. Otherwise, you won't get it next year. Uh, second, timing and value are the most important parts of this game. Some tactics may be fantastic at different moments or a different point in time, but you have to consider where you are in proximity to the vote. So when you're going through this, you may see something and say, hey, this is a great idea. But actually, when you remember that we're only four weeks away from the vote, it might not be something that we're able to organize in that, in that time, type of fashion. All right. So again, should be familiar with these by now, but this is what they look like. As a reminder, you have eight of these and only eight of each for the whole game. All right. I'm going to have us do a quick sample round, uh, and then we'll see how we go from there. All right, so in this sample round, I'm going to tell you how we're going to vote. But in the future rounds, you're going to be making the decision for yourself. All right, so you have all of your options here. Uh, and the first thing is you have grassroots. So you could have advocates make phone calls to members of Congress that are undecided. Second, public policy. Launch a coalition splash page linked to an advocacy action center. Third, media relations. Launch a media outreach effort on the value of this issue, pitching reporters that cover human health topics in particular. And fourth, direct lobbying. So you could sponsor third party research on the state by state economic impact of the bill. Now, of these, I think uh, the one that I'm the most excited about is getting my advocates to take direct action and call Congress. I'm going to go and put two votes down. Uh, and since I don't have a ton of contacts, I'm only going to put votes down on that right now. Uh, since I think the other ones might depend a lot more on timing. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go to my token sheet and check off two grassroots tokens. That means I cannot use those again. Next, I add it to the scoring sheet. Let's take a look at what that looks like. 
So you, let's say, have everyone write in a two in the grassroots, as you can see here, up at the top, so it says player token. In other rounds, you'll want to, you'll likely want to play multiple tactics. So you'll have uh, your tokens for grassroots, tokens for public policy, and across the board on that first level. But again, we're just looking at grassroots here. All right, so the next step is seeing how the opponents played. So it looks like they invested across the board here. They had one vote on grassroots, two on public policy, one on media relations, and three on direct lobbying. So let's see what that will look like on your scoring sheet. On your scoring sheet, you will want to write down the numbers across the board. So in opponent tokens, you would write down one, two, one, three. The next thing that would happen is I will reveal the vote value, which is the vote multiplier. So what you'll see in this first sample round here, the vote value. We're saying that grassroots is three times the most valuable effort to do right now. Uh, public policy one, media relations doing that solid pitching, pretty helpful. Direct lobbying may be a little less helpful right now. Um, so you can see that across the board now, you would then write three, one, two, one as the multiplier. And then here's where the math would come in. So luckily for us right now, we only put tokens on grassroots. It's pretty simple math. Uh, so I'll take a look here at what your scorecard would look like. You would multiply two by three, so your player tokens by three to your player votes gained. So you would then write down that total right there. This means that you got six votes. Now, what happens here uh, is that the opponent also gets uh, the multiplier. So again, they, they have the same exact advantages as you. So you'll need to do this for them. You'll multiply one by three for them because they played one token here and the, the vote value is three and then they got three. Then the last thing you do is you go in and you subtract. So uh, what you see here is you had six votes, they had three votes. That means you have a net gain of three votes right here and your round score is three. Remember, you are looking just to get to plus eight in this game overall. Now, let's take a quick look and see what would happen if this were reversed. So if the whole thing were reversed and you played one on grassroots, opponent played two, uh, basically you would be at net negative three here. So that would mean that you were in the whole three votes and you would need to recover that in the future. All right, any questions right now? Uh, as you can see, you will need to write in how you're voting, how your opponent voted, which I will tell you, what the vote value would be, which I will tell you, and then you'll need to do the math. And at the end, you'll end you'll add up all the items in the net vote gained lost for your round score. And at the end of the game, we'll actually get your total amount. All right, I'm going to proceed, and we're gonna start with round one of the game. All right, get ready, everyone. All right, round one. First things first, you have to make your choice. I'm gonna read this out loud, but you should start thinking about how you wanna spend your vote. This is around the time that I like to tell people that advocacy professionals also don't often do very well at this game because all of these tactics you can see could be very valuable at different moments. But I'm gonna give you a few moments to decide how you want to vote. All right, so first, grassroots. Post a virtual day of action, calling upon administration officials to commit their support. Although it's post-COVID world, we're seeing that a lot of virtual days of action might be helpful in the future here, so that's a good one to keep in mind. Public policy. Reach out to special interest groups to encourage their support of the bill. So reaching out and Seeing if you can get some other third party validators out there, always helpful. Media relations. Advertise via geo targeting of district offices of key undecided members of Congress. Uh, might be a little interesting. Uh, you might have, so depending on what platform you're using, there are all sorts of different ad bands right now, so you have to be a little careful with that one, but still a really good tactic. And then direct lobbying. Dispatch lobbyists to Capitol Hill to make in-person check-ins on how members of Congress will vote. Now, reminder, you have eight tokens total. These tokens will not be replenished. So whatever you spend in this round, 
uh, you will have to uh, lose and check off on your list. All right, I'll give you a moment to make a decision here. All right, so go in and make sure that you check off your tokens in the token sheet in addition to writing down the tokens used on your scorecard. So in that first line of the scorecard in round one, you'll want to make sure that you have whatever you've, you've written in there. All right. I'm going to go ahead and see how the opponent played. All right. The opponent went really heavy in grassroots and public policy. Uh, so they have that virtual day of action happening, and they've reached out to some special interest groups that support them and, and to encourage them on the bill. Uh, and then they did two on media relations and two on direct lobbying. So now is the time to take a moment to write down across the line, three, three, two, two. All right. Next step is to see what the vote value is. So you, you have your vote, you have the opponent's vote, Next, the vote value. All righty, you've got some pretty high value tactics here, but we'll explore them more in, in more detail in a moment. Uh, but in the meantime, write down two, three, two, two. I'm actually just going to go ahead and type that in the chat here as well so that everyone can copy that and see it. I'll give you a moment to do some math here, uh, but in the meantime, as you finish, uh, just go ahead and feel free to share what your point score is in the chat. I uh, would love to see people's, uh, where people are. Again, as a reminder, uh, no shame. It's uh, early on. You've got three more rounds yet to go, uh, so it's okay if you end up negative here. All right, so while people are calculating, and tabulating, I'm going to talk through a little bit about why the votes got valued that way. So let's keep in mind we are four weeks until the vote here, which is a great time to lay the groundwork for all kinds of tactics. The virtual day of action is something you may consider a little later on, since it might be a little bit closer. The geotargeting is definitely something to start this early, and you want to give yourself enough time to do some great A-B testing and see what kind of ads will cultivate action. So that's definitely something you want to know early on. Um, it's also a really good idea to get those light touch meetings and check-ins and see where you've got some wiggle room with uh, for the direct lobbying there. But the one tactic that pays off a little more this early on is getting those other stakeholders and partners engaged. Special interest groups or other advocacy groups working together is so important, especially early on in the process. Uh, and we want to make sure that we are really valuing that. All right. As you, as we are about to head into round two, uh, feel free to share your vote in the chat, uh, or uh, feel free to note anything or ask any questions. I hope that people did well that round, but again, no shame if you're in the negatives right now. You've still got lots of time to recuperate. All right, fantastic. I am gonna move on to round two. Now, round two, we have three weeks left until our vote, so things are starting to heat up. Get a little scrambly here. Let's see what our options are. Oh, no, we've got a wild card. Uh, so, oh, goodness. Okay, so what this means is with any advocacy campaign, you have to be prepared for the unexpected. Uh, so let's see what possibly could have happened to derail you in this process. All right. Oof, yikes. So uh, an op-ed was submitted without approval from your media relations team. Uh, take it from me, trust me, I can tell you they do not like that. Uh, the piece was unfortunately picked up and shared thousands of times. Uh, and worse, it featured the wrong bill number and name. You actually need to forfeit two media relations tokens right now to go ahead and just cut those media relations tokens out of your budget. You no longer get to spend those. The important lesson here is to make sure to coordinate with your teams and to double check the little things whenever you're doing a big push out there. It's so crucial and so important and it makes a really big difference uh, because those little things end up blowing up into really big things that end up costing you more money. So again, to forfeit 
go to your token sheet, cross off two media relations tokens. If you used all eight the last round, very bold move. I'm not going to judge you for it, but you're in luck because you won't have a deficit. You don't have to go negative here. If this is your last two, if you went six in the last round and these are your last two, then you don't have any more to go forward with. All right. Now that we've gotten past the wild card, let's take a look at round two and see what we have to vote on here. All right. So again, as I read these aloud, feel free to think about your vote and how you're going to be assigning your remaining tokens. So let's start off with grassroots. So you want to ask key contacts to create, share your story videos, and tweet them at members of Congress. Uh, key contact programs can be one of the most powerful tools for advocacy groups. And although we're playing in a post-COVID world, consider that the storytelling tactic is one that's really great right now. Uh, we've worked with a ton of clients and a number of groups that are doing uh, filming the advocacy stories. It also gets your members and people who might be willing to share a story feeling really engaged. Uh, so it's a great tactic to, pl to plug in there early on here. Public policy. Um, you want to circulate media, social media advocacy toolkits with sample messaging and creative. Toolkits are, of course, a powerful way to keep people on message. We re recommend making them as easy to use as possible. For a few instances, we've actually made web pages with one-click copy-paste social content. Uh, so it really just makes it very easy for people to share your message and spread that out. Toolkits, always a really good thing to, to focus on. Media relations. Uh, here we're planning a virtual panel of experts hosted by a media outlet, uh, maybe an Axios or a Politico or uh, someone else. Uh, it's a really popular tactic to get this kind of visibility, and it really can make a big difference. And then last, direct lobbying. So you see a member of Congress in the elevator of the Capitol, you pitch them on an issue. Of course, a little less likely that this will happen these days, since we're typically one person per elevator. But uh, ask me later about the time I saw a member of Congress uh, and that someone tried to lobby at a bar uh, it's called the Tune In in Washington, D.C., in Capitol Hill. Uh, and I'll tell you how that went. All right, so you got a few moments here. Uh, you can submit your tokens. Uh, again, think about where you want to be applying the most budget right now. All right. I will give you another couple moments here looking at this. And let's go ahead and submit your tokens. Remember that you need to mark off your tokens on your token sheet and on your score sheet. So you need to indicate what your score was and then mark those off so you don't have those remaining here. All right, I'll give you a moment to do that. And then let's see how the opponent played. All right, the opponent went really heavy on uh, grassroots and lobbying. Uh, so the grassroots, again, was to ask key contacts to share your story and uh, tweet them at, at members of Congress. And the direct lobbying was to see a member of Congress in the elevator and get the cap at the, of the Capitol and pitch them on the issue. So uh, let's take a moment to write across the, the line there, three, one, one, three. So you'll have your votes on top, their votes, three, one, one, three underneath. Let's take a look at the vote value here. All right. It looks like media relations really wins out here. Uh, and perhaps unsurprisingly, chatting up someone in the elevator isn't going to make that much of a difference. Uh, so take a moment to go ahead and uh, write down two, two, three, one. Uh, and that's gonna be your vote multiplier. And this is where you can start to do that fun math as well. So as you're doing the math, I will uh, tell you what was told to me about this representative uh, that, so I was at the tune in on Capitol Hill. Uh, and I didn't hear this and was told by another patron afterwards uh, that what happened is that an advocate came up and tried to talk to a representative, it was Representative Grealva, for those who care. Uh, and, uh, the, and he said, I appreciate your concern, but I'm meeting with an important constituent right now. Uh, but feel free to reach out to a schedule meeting. And his important constituent was uh, a glass of beer. So uh, I think important to keep in mind that uh, representatives are people too, and you wanna make sure that you're getting in at the right moment here uh, when you are going to reach out and to do that kind of direct lobbying. So uh, as you are doing the math, uh, 
feel free to share what your score is. We'd love to see uh, any notes in the chat uh, of how people might be doing. All right, let's take a closer look at the tactics as well. But again, your multipliers, two, two, three, and one. All right, <clears throat> so again, while the grassroots and public policy tactics are both really solid, they're also things that could happen at other times in the campaign, keeping in mind that timing is so important. When we're thinking about the right time, the right investment, three weeks out is a great time for this kind of exposure for on-message experts who will help. So that's why that media relations thing is going to be really helpful there. Um, it's close enough to the vote to have a compelling hook and far enough away that you can really get an early wave of media coverage for your topic that will amplify the conversation. Again, with regards to the elevator pitch, definitely engage with members in this manner if you have the moment, but keep in mind that the best opportunities are going to be when you put an advocate in front of them and when you can have their undivided attention. Um, so just keeping that in mind and making sure that you are looking at the whole ecosystem. So again, the real winner here, thinking about media relations in that way. All right, uh, let's move on to round three of the vote here. All right, so you have two weeks until the vote. Uh, so you're really getting to crunch mode now, uh, making lots of plans. Uh, I, I will remind you also that round three is a really major moment uh, for your budget here and as you're building your whole plan. In round four, you will have to spend down all of your tokens. That means that you've got this use it or lose it budget, which means that you have to make strategic choices this round. Do you have uh, enough budget? Do you save budget in the last round when your options may be limited and you don't know what's gonna show up and what kind of tactics may come up? Or do you go with what you know, with what you have right now? Important strategic decision that you need to just Keep in mind and uh, have have at the top of your mind when you're deciding how you're going to possibly do these folks. All right, let's take a moment here and look at the scenarios. Oh no, <laughs> you've got another wild card. Uh, it is important to again remember that things just pop up at different times. Uh, every campaign is always going to have this happen. It's really important that you are prepared and aware of what could happen and what could arise. So let's take a look at this wild card. Oh, so sad. It looks like you spent the last two weeks of this campaign contacting your advocates. And unfortunately, it had been a while since you had talked to them. So many people had filtered your emails or just tuned you out altogether. A key reminder here, Cultivating your advocates to help you reach policymakers cannot just happen at random. You need to spend time and energy to invest in them and get them engaged early on. I mentioned before that there's all sorts of advertising changes and bans happening right now. Uh, Facebook has political ad bans, uh, Twitter has political ad bans, and lots of other platforms are adopting them and adapting them. Uh, you want to keep in mind that you may not be able to drive people in the way that you used to be able to drive people. So focusing on having a steady drumbeat of communication with your advocates is going to make a really big difference as we head into 2021. So uh, the loss here for this issue uh, is uh, one grassroots token because you didn't invest early on. Again, if you're out of grassroots tokens, so be it, no deficit for you. Uh, if you have one grassroots token left, sorry, you cannot play any more grassroots tokens here. So go ahead, take a moment, and mark off one more grassroots token on your token sheet. Uh, and again, keep in mind that as we head into the actual round three here, uh, you're going to have limited effort and limited time, limited budget moving forward. All right, so let's take a look at round three and our options. All right. Here are our options. So with two weeks left, you can launch a campaign targeting key congressional districts to generate thousands of letters or emails to undecided members of Congress. Uh, this is, uh, we do something called letter desking a lot, and it's been a really successful tactic. It's just a little different than sending a form blast out, um, and it's getting really customized letters out. The way that it works is we get a team of people to interview advocates, and then we actually draft a letter for them and then help them get that letter out 
to a, a member of Congress or, or a representative. Again, just a way to get that real interesting, real unique angle into your your uh, your contact and your content. Uh, these form blasts can be helpful, uh, but they are also sometimes just going to be overlooked. It's not going to have a ton of variety. So if you can actually get that specific messaging in there and those unique angles, that can make a big difference. Next is public policy. So you can create a coalition to gain support among key stakeholders for the passage of HR1. Coalitions are so important and the power of many makes a difference. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to structure coalitions, of course, uh, and it's really important to think about uh, what the role of a coalition should be uh, and how you can leverage those coalitions. So can't say enough about how valuable and important those are. Media relations. Uh, you are recruiting an expert to call into a national talk radio show uh, to discuss the issue. Um, you'll, of course, need to make amends with your media relations team after the gap early on, uh, but I'll bet they'll help you out still. Uh, so just keeping in mind that uh, when you're doing this kind of pitching and when you're doing this kind of work, uh, it's important to make sure that you're getting into the, into the right audiences. So who are you trying to reach and what do you actually want them to do? How can you engage them in the most effective ways? Last, direct lobbying. Uh, you can host a briefing for con congressional staff featuring patient advocates discussing the importance of lowering out-of-pocket costs to increasing access. And again, I know we're talking about a post-COVID world here, but during COVID and also probably after, uh, virtual briefings are going to be a really great way to get exposure. Uh, there's a lot of different opportunities and a lot of different groups that we've seen that are doing some really unique uh, congressional briefings in this way uh, or uh, webinars, town halls, uh, just finding ways again to get those intimate conversations and to get those uh, those moments where you're getting advocates in front of members and uh, creating those moments uh, there. I will say one thing that we're hearing a lot is that uh, in this virtual environment, uh, when advocates are having the opportunity to talk to members of Congress, they're getting a lot more direct one-on-one -on -one conversation. So it's actually a higher quality visit for a lot of them. Uh, many people also have said and indicated and reported that it's uh, much less nerve wracking to uh, talk to a member of Congress through Zoom or through a video chat of any kind than it is to actually go through and uh, talk to them in person. So lots of advantages, lots of things to really keep in mind there. And I think it's really important to think about all of those holistically in combination there too. All right, so take a moment here to figure out your vote. Uh, and uh, you again, remembering that you're in round three right now, uh, round four, you're going to have to submit everything. So it's just going to be putting, blowing your whole budget out of the water. So think about where the best investment of energy and effort might be right now. All right. I'll give you another couple moments here. All righty. And let's go ahead and submit your vote. So again, make sure to write them down in the sheet and to check them off in the in your token bank there. And let's take a moment to see how the opponent played. Now you'll see actually uh, they played a little bit safe here. Uh, they're lowering some engagement. Maybe that'll work out for us uh, since they're going a little bit lower generally. Um, it does seem like they've got a competing coalition happening though. So that's really important for us to keep in mind also looks like they may have a competing virtual event. So with that, uh, just make sure that your events aren't happening on the same days, or if they are, just make sure that you are uh, targeting things in the right way and that you are uh, getting people, getting the uh, members' attention in the way that you need to get their attention. So across the line there for how opponents played, go one, two, one, two. All right, uh, let's go ahead and see the vote value here. All right, interesting. So we've got really high value uh, for the grassroots, two not so great values with public policy and media relations, uh, and one sort of middling one uh, with the public, uh, or with the um, direct lobbying there as well. So uh, take a moment to write your vote values across there. So three, one, one, 
to write that across the line. And I'll give you a moment to start to do some math, and then we will dig into why these tactics work and why some of them might not be the best moment for these, these elements. If anyone is uh, interested, I, I'm, I'm very interested to see if anyone has uh, any any existing uh, votes or anything happening here. Uh, looking to see if, uh, hoping people are getting close to that eight, remembering that the goal of the game is to get eight votes. Uh, but definitely happy to see if, if people are above that. All right. So, give you one more moment here and then we'll take a look at the results. All right. So, taking a quick look here, uh, I think we can understand why a customized letter makes a really big difference. Uh, I was talking about it before, uh, but I think it's really important to keep in mind that uh, it, it does create that intimacy, it does create that uh, that key moment, that key voice, especially if you're getting the right key voice to the right member at the right time. Um, the virtual briefing is also great, but you could probably do that in a different week. You don't necessarily need to do a virtual briefing in two with two weeks before. Um, so and you can still get good value at other moments as well. Um, let's look at why these public policy and media relations tactics may not work in a little bit more detail though. So first off, again, coalitions, so important. Uh, I'm guessing that many, if not most of you, have been a part of them. Uh, with two weeks to go, you are going to be lucky if you can get your coalition to issue a press release, let alone to coalesce around your policy issues. Coalition building is really important, and we help a lot of our clients do this work, uh, but it has to happen earlier on. Uh, you have to make sure that you've established protocols, that you've aligned on things, uh, there's a lot of buy-in that has to happen. So with two weeks until a vote, it's just not going to be enough or sufficient, likely, uh, for you to really get a coalition off the ground. Now, again, in this virtual world, there's a lot of different sharing tactics. So if you've already got this pre-existing relationship with a group, maybe you might be able to lift something up. Maybe there's another organization that's doing something already and it can be really simple. You have to do a lot of that groundwork, though. And you do have to remember that at, if you're going to just be throwing a lot of budget and money in on a, a coalition this late in the game, you may want to actually think about what the life will be afterwards as well. So just keeping in mind, great investment overall, maybe not great investment with two weeks to go. Similarly, the expert on a national talk show could also be a really good approach but with two weeks before, you may want to be having your experts focus on writing op-eds in target members' districts instead of focusing on such a diffuse tactic. If you've got subject matter experts, if you've got people who can really uh, articulate what you're trying to accomplish with your, your positioning and your, your whole approach, you want to really make sure that you're leveraging those people, especially in those last two weeks, uh, in the exact right ways. So putting them on a talk show host, uh, a talk show might be a good idea, maybe something you do a little bit earlier on. Maybe you do that and you also double down and have them writing some op-eds. Just keeping in mind that if this is the only way that you're using that, that expert at this point in time, it's not going to be the best use of their time and not gonna get you the most bang for your buck there. All right, with all of that, let's move on to round four. So round four, uh, you have one week until the vote. I'm going to promise you there are no more wild cards here, but you do have to remember you have to spend down your entire budget now. So any remaining tactic, any remaining tokens that you have have to be spent on these tactics here. Uh, so as we're looking at this, it'll probably be a little bit of a faster round for you since you should just be able to write in exactly what you're going to have. Uh, but you're going to take a look and see how that's going to shape up for you in a moment here. All right. So uh, next, let's take a look. With one week until the vote, you have the following options. Grassroots, you can send out an action alert newsletter and encourage advocates to then share with their communities. Now, hopefully by now you've built up a good email communication cadence. 
uh, after that snafu with the, the grassroots team earlier where you hadn't been talking to them, you probably sent enough blasts out that they're getting a little bit excited that you have that traction. Again, remembering building and, and nurturing your grassroots community should be an ongoing process. Uh, next, public policy. You could survey the senior population of your membership to provide really compelling data points to include in advocacy materials. Uh, that's obviously going to be a really important constituent to consider with Medicare Part D legislation. So again, remembering what we're focusing on here, thinking about that key audience, getting the, those voices in, probably going to be really useful and helpful. Media relations, you can recruit local spokespeople to build relationships with journalists at members of Congress hometown papers and to pitch them on the issue. So, uh, you know, that's, that's really important. You want to make sure that you are building those direct connections, that you have, uh, have those relationships, especially if there's someone on a specific committee that you know that you're going to be working on in the future. This also is probably a time where you want to think about not just this big push, but are there connections that I can build and shore up that will help me down the line, uh, help me with future pushes? Are there journalists that might have different beats that could be really helpful for us to, to really cultivate relationships with now? And then finally, uh, direct lobbying. This is to send a letter to the Hill in support of key measures in the bill signed by patient advocacy group leaders. So really getting those key voices uh, by this point in time, you may have built up a whole surround sound with some of those voices. So hopefully you have a key leader who uh, you have a video asset from them, you have quotes from them, maybe those quotes are in your, uh, your overall media relations pitches, thinking about having that big surround sound for your final moment of your campaign here. All right, so as a reminder, take a moment to clear out your tokens and add them to your score sheet. So what you need to do here is just cross out any remaining tokens you have and then add that to your, your score. You have to zero out here. All right, let's take a look at how the opponent played here. All right, uh, sadly, our friends, the opponent ran out of grassroots tokens. Uh, so they could not send out an action alert newsletter and encourage advocates to then share with their communities. Uh, so they actually uh, were, were stuck after that grassroots snafu. Uh, one thing that you can do here is do a little bit of opposition research as you're going through and think about, okay, where did they send things that could help you out and how you were voting beforehand. Uh, but anyways, they couldn't send out an action alert newsletter and encourage advocates to then share with their communities. Uh, so they did manage to uh, then focus in on some media relations and some public policy and just a little bit of that direct lobbying there. So maybe a letter with a few less advocates on their side. So let's take a moment to write down across the line, zero, two, two, one. Okay, let's see how this pans out. All right, interesting. Really two strong value tactics here, the action alert and the letter to the Hill signed by patient advocacy groups. So take a moment to write out in your vote multipliers, three, one, one, three. I promise this is your last math of the day that I'm going to be supervising. So if you have other math to do, that's not, not on me, but this is the last that you have to do for this game, uh, except for actually adding up your, your total score. So maybe that was a little exaggeration. But let's take a moment to look at why some of these tactics may be stronger than others. All right, so of course we are focusing in on the grassroots and the direct lobbying here, which were both vote valued at three, and then uh, thinking about why the media relations and public policy approaches may not be the best valued at ones now. Um, so of course, surveying your senior populations is always going to be really helpful, but you will really want to get those data points early on. If you're just now thinking about, oh, geez, I should have these data points uh, from my, my senior members, or should I should have these testimonials, uh, with one week left, you're probably a little bit too late. Uh, so keeping in mind early on in a campaign, when you know what the, uh, the objectives of your legislation is, think about who you're trying to reach and who's gonna be the best influencer on those things. So who you're trying to reach and what you want them to do and then think about how you can integrate that into 
an overall campaign approach. So that's why that public policy is going to be a little bit ranked, ranked a little bit lower right now. So similarly, media relations, recruiting local spokespeople to build those relationships with journalists, so important. Having those relationships with their hometown, uh, the people who they might be listening to in their district offices, really, really crucial and important possibly a little bit too late. You may not have had the moment or the, the opportunity to really uh, build a, a good rapport with a journalist at this point in time or to really actually dive in and make sure that you've gotten your points across or that you've shaped the environment early on. Again, so much of this game, so much of advocacy overall is about timing and resources and seeing where you are with both of those. Uh, so I think even if you had actually invested or that tactic had shown up a little earlier on in the process, uh, it may have been worth a little bit more, but at this point in time, it's just a, a little bit, a little too, too little too late. Now the grassroots, uh, setting an action alert and encouraging advocates to share with their communities, really crucial. So many fantastic advocacy CRMs out there and tools that you can use to send out blasts and to get people engaged. Uh, just making sure that, again, you have that steady cadence of communication before you get to this point, really, really important, but definitely getting action alerts out there and finding ways to enable and empower your advocate to be uh, spokespeople for you. So if you can set up your campaign so that they can get rewarded in some way or so they can feel like they're doing more by sharing the story and sharing the alert, makes a really big difference here. So really a fantastic approach. And of course, Sending a letter to the Hill in support of your key measures in the bill, signed by patient advocacy group leaders. Talk a little bit about how you can generate and create that broader surround sound here. Really a great idea and really a great way to figure out how you might want to pace out and pull through voices throughout. So, all right. Uh, if you have not yet had a chance to do your vote, this is your, your or to do your final calculations, this is your last moment. Uh, and now it is time to tally your scores and determine if HR1 passes the House of Representatives. So uh, in it, as we talked about at the beginning here, uh, to uh, actually pass the House of Representatives, HR1 needs eight votes. So you need to just have eight votes, seven votes, and it fails uh, eight and above your great. Um, so I hope that you are getting to that eight. Uh, did anyone uh, get to pass uh, the, the their vote here? Not not sure. I, I'm hopeful that some of you did. Um, and if you didn't, I hope that you at least uh, got to learn a little bit about why it's so important to think about the overall planning and the overall structure here. So, with that, uh, that is political capital. Um, thank you all so much for participating in this. Uh, it's a really, really great way to uh, get your teams engaged and to get your your mind thinking about what's the right way and what's the right approach for me to uh, think about how I'm going to approach different campaigns. I think it's a fun way to start the year off as well uh, and just to make sure that we're uh, percolating and, and really uh, getting ahead of what some of the ideas and how you may want to engage in the future could look like. Um, so I'm going to open it up to any questions that anyone has here. Uh, uh, and again, thank you. Oh, Amanda, can I hear you? Oh, minor technical difficulty. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, great, great. Okay, sorry about that. So I was saying thank you, Alex. And there were a few people that commented that they did get their eight plus votes. So a round of applause to those. You should definitely take that with you all day and share that with your teams that you were successful here on our biotechnical uh, political capital game. So as Alex mentioned, she's happy to take any questions, you know, maybe about the game itself or sort of the tactics and the explanations that she gave. So I'll give folks just a few moments if they do have anything um, to drop that in the chat or the questions pane. And thank you, Amanda. I'm so glad to hear that some of you got those eight votes. Uh, I, it's, it's a tough one. <laughs> 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 
All right. Well, let me click one more time. I have my scorecard up. I have the webinar up, so I got to make sure that I can click through. I don't want to miss anyone if they if they did have anything to share. But I didn't see anything come through. But as always, if you do have any questions um, after we sign off here, don't hesitate to reach out to the bio team here. We can always get in contact with Beekeeper um, if there's something that pops in your mind later this afternoon. Uh, we hope to see you all back again next month for our next biotechnical advocacy lab. Um, a happy snowy day for those of you that have snow on the ground. Uh, stay warm and we'll see you soon.